Survivor News. 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 What's going on? And we are back with your Survivor News, covering Survivor Season 46, Episode 3. And I'm here with the homies. We've got Jack Atkins from The Circle Season 2. What up? Wendeezy, yep. first merge boot. And we have the legend, the queen. You might remember <laughs> her from Season 44. You might remember her sitting out on that bench changing the game. Let's welcome back, or welcome to, this is the first time ever on the Purple Pants Podcast, Claire Rafson. What's popping? Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you. How have you been? I've been good, you know, just hanging out, doing my thing. <laughs> I've been good, yeah. Have you been keeping up with Survivor? I have been, I have been. Um, it's way harder to keep up on the West Coast than it was back when I was out East because it sucks being behind on Twitter, so you get all the updates really early and then you have to rewatch it, but keeping up, enjoying the season so far. So I do have a question for you, since you are on the West Coast. Uh, West Coast. When people on the East Coast and we're tweeting about Survivor and we are very passionate, I always get very frustrated when someone's like, you spoil, spoil. Like, what's your thoughts on that? Because I feel like if you know when Survivor is on, on the East Coast, why is you on Beyonce's internet? No, 100%. It's your fault if you get spoiled on those things. Like, just stay off Twitter for three hours. Like, go outside, do something, and then come back. Or, like, you can even, whatever, like, mute the keywords. I don't know how to do that, but. The, the problem is, we're. Um, I agree with you on Twitter, but Bryce is talking about, like, IG, where the second a baby boy goes home, he'll have, like, a 10-picture slideshow of, like. My fallen soldier, Jalinski. <laughs> it's like, I pull up Instagram just trying to. So, but, so, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Like, stay on, like, is it my fault? Are okay. there rules, Bryce? Are there rules? Claire, what you got? Well, first off, hot take. <laughs> this is actually probably a bad take. But I actually, especially now that the episodes are an hour and a half, I don't like waiting to figure out who goes home. Like it's too long. Like my I'm my attention span is too small. So like I kind of like just like I like to read the end of a book before I start a book, and like I read the wikis. So I'm like, okay, like I like to know who's going home, and then I watch the episode for like all the fun. But like, that's wild. I I, I appreciate that take. And so to your point, Jack. So okay, say I do. You know, drop a slideshow. When is the appropriate time? Because say I do it Thursday, then I'll I still the get people. Morning. Okay, because I still get people the next day like, huh, spoiled. Well, maybe the thing is you, you put like the first slide is maybe just like, just you. And it, it's like, spoiler, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert like, but why, why do I got to do that? It's just considerate. No, you want to get the likes. Do what you need to get the right likes. But also if you if you put the little first slide up, I mean, when they're when they're scrolling an hour from now, they're still going to see that second slide because you know how the second slide pops up. So I, I guess there's no win here. Bryce, you just got to wait till the next day at least, and you also have to say spoiler alert. Okay. I just figured I, I'd get everyone's opinion because, you know, it's a hot topic these days. Uh, but before we get into the episode, of course, you know, we got some house notifications to get done, the BW. P246 is well on its way. We just came back from DC and we definitely had a time. DC showed up, showed out. Uh, I mean, I can't say enough about it, but I just also just want to let the posse know that our next stop, we will be in Pittsburgh, April 3rd. So you can get your tickets. Uh, Bryce and Wynn present on Instagram or Bryce and Wynn on Twitter. Uh, so we're headed to Pittsburgh. After that, I believe it is Chicago, then Dallas, then Boston, then Philly. Then we are bringing it home, the finale in New York. So... If you've never been, take this as your opportunity to head to a Bryce and Win present event. DC Claire last night was a vibe. We had yeah. some special guests in the building. So, you know, anytime, you know, Bryce and Win come, we try to show them love. But I mean, DC was so much fun. It was really a vibe. I was trying not to get too crunk. And then <laughs> I, I got crunk. I'm not Thanks. quite sure how that happened. But, uh, 
Yeah. What was your, you've been to a Bryson Wynn, Claire, like what's your take on the Bryson Wynn experience? Don't get me started. You know, I love a Bryson Wynn party. <laughs> I have the best time ever and I am so devastated that I have not gotten to go to one yet. And it's been, you know, I feel like I've been, I've been to what, like, I feel like. 30. Yeah. It feels like I've been to a million at this point. And I went before I was on the show. I went. You met Jack and Philly. Before I went all of the time. Um, and I just, it's always a good time. Always showing out like people let loose, live a little. And it's just like such a fun time. I'm like devastated that I haven't been to one yet. I feel like every Wednesday I'm like itching for rice and wine parties. <laughs> Question, how do you feel about like, what was it like being um, on one side versus the other side? Like as you, you used to come as a fan, I remember that. And then you were coming as a survivor. What's what's it like? But before she answers, I just also have to say, if you know Claire, I don't, from my perspective, there is no difference, right? Like I feel like when Claire came before she was on, it didn't matter. And after she was on, it didn't matter. Uh, so I just wanted to give that hot take. <laughs> I acted like I was already one of those people on the show at that point. But yeah, I mean, being a fan, it was like fun and awesome. And it was so cool. And like, you can like fangirl and everyone's so friendly, but they do treat you like regular people. So it's not like, you know, like if people were nice to me before, after I feel like the big difference is like more free drinks. <laughs> like, I feel like you just like, I love to take shots with people. I love to drink with people. And like, I mean, I had three episodes of like watch parties where I was on the show. Oh, but I don't think I went to single price one then. But like people, you know, after I was off, it was kind of more of like a, if people recognize me, they're like a real one because it's a deep cut at this point. Um, so like, I don't know, but I think both sides, like everyone's just so mixed together. So it really doesn't even like feel that different, um, except that like now I know people. The one thing that I appreciate the most about you, Claire, uh, although we share, we're both third boots, I definitely think there is a similar energy to our events, there are some people that, you know, kind of are reluctant to go out into the crowd and to meet people. I feel like you and I have the same energy. One, we're never hanging out because anytime I, I can look across the room and I can see Claire. I'll be on the other side of the room. I see Claire. Like, <laughs> where you're like me in the sense you're just all over the place meeting and greeting and having so much fun. And I love, like, the next day of the recaps, seeing all the photos. I'm like, okay, damn, Claire was there. Damn, Claire was there. Damn, Claire was taking a shot there. Like, so it's a, I just love your energy. Wait, such a cutie thing. This reminded me. I, Sweet Baby Charlie was such a patron of Bryce and Wen before he was on the show. And I had this like cute little selfie with him. And I like truly did not remember taking it. Like he texted, like finally when he was on, how cute do I look? Wow. Where was uh, it? But when he was on, like, I was like, oh my God. And he was like, you probably don't remember, but we met. And like him and his girlfriend were there. Like he went to the Boston ones always. And it's like, it's so crazy. Like he was truly had not even gone out to film yet. And we like, he was probably early in casting when I met him. That that's crazy. And what's even more crazy about that, Claire, is that there are like four other stories like that. Carla is one of them. Like I just, there's, there's a couple other ones that have come to our parties and then they've been on the show. Uh, we're just, we just waiting for Jack to get out there. So I can't wait to tell that Jack. Story. <laughs> but I mean, just in general, it seems like not, not for, for not like not for legal purposes, but if you go to a Bryce and presents, you know, there's <laughs> energy there that it could, you know, so get you a ticket. <laughs> Listen, um, wait, we don't need Jeff. I don't want Jeff probes. Uh, Jeff, we don't want no smoke probes. We love you. <laughs> uh, well, listen. Let's uh the the moderator with the operator, the deadline. <laughs> Jack, what you got for us this episode? Oh yeah. Um, we get back from Yanu's tribal council where uh, Jess went home, played her fake idol, uh, and did not play her shot in the dark. You know, the fake idol last episode was fun, but we did talk about it's a little bit dicey. And the, we see that right here where they have to explain to Banu what the whole situation with this fake idol was. And now, you know, that kind of helps uh, him continue his descent into paranoia. And he's freaking out. We see him go have conversations with Kenzie and with Q, just trying to get kind of a foothold in the game. Uh, I would say neither one goes spectacularly <laughs> well. Uh Kenzie, in Kenzie's defense, she did reach out to Bonnie previously and just didn't get a lot back from him. And so I do respect that she's like, I'm open to work with you, but you got to be the one to cook up a plan. 
uh, because she feels good with, you know, Tiffany and Q. Q somehow seems to motivate him by telling him he could be his Philip Shepard. And that, uh, what was the other quote? Wackadoodles can win, uh, title of the episode. I don't know. What did you guys think about uh, Bonnie's day of conversations following this tribal council? I was a little frustrated, right? Just hearing them tell him, oh, we didn't tell you this because we wanted to protect you. And like, I don't know, I just kept putting myself in his shoes. And it's like, okay, I understand it, but I don't love it. Like, don't keep me out. It just doesn't make sense. But I feel like he is a special soul. Uh, and I feel like he's just kind of winging it. Like, he's off of, he's going off of the fields, right? Like, he's not, he's playing with his heart. And so I can respect that. And he, there's one heart to give to him uh to his million we're we're two millionths of the way there make it three <laughs> I'll give him five. I'll, i'm there too five, five out of a million he's got well i think he has he has two out there right got ben and liz so that's six you know we're working on it. we could start a uh like a uh you know fund me for hearts <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh banu this man like He's not cut out for Survivor, I don't think. Um, I think he's a really, really sweet individual that wears his heart heart on his sleeve. And I think he's swimming with some sharks right now. And like, and he's at a place where these three people who are are playing the game, right? He and ke actively keeping him out of things. Now he's forming different stories in his head, and he doesn't know what's real. And so I, I kind of feel I kind of feel sorry for the guy. Okay, in defense of Banu, he's done better on Survivor than I did. <laughs> so first off, he's me too. Than us. <laughs> so so that's based on how long he's made it. Well, I'm just saying this. Yes. So, but then secondly, I will say one thing I actually am impressed by is like, although he does not know how to use the information, he has at least like clocked some good power dynamics, and like I think of it all like. I do think Kenzie is kind of like running the show and is kind of the like mob boss of the tribe. And he is like, at least seeing that he doesn't, I think know at all what to do with that information. But like, I feel like there's other people who are really truly running around and don't understand anything. Like he's like seeing it. He just literally just cries and can't fix it. So my question though, is that a strategy, right? Like, could you have a strategy and not know it's a strategy, but it still be a strategy, right? Because I feel like it it's not a strategy. It, <laughs> it could go well for you. You could yeah. like fumble your way into something good. But, but that's not a strategy though. I think strategy has to have like intention behind it. All right, so the answer be this, right? If you are walking on a path and you the king don't of analogies. Know <laughs> and you don't know where you're going, right? Like, so if you're walking on a path that's as paved, you're still walking on a path. But if you like venture off into the woods and it's not paved and you're kind of just figuring out, are you still walking? But you're not, if you're not, if you don't <laughs> do it with knowledge, it's not, you're not strategizing. Yes, you're still walking. To answer your question, okay. you're still you, walking. No, but that's like, if in Survivor, you would still be playing. But you right. be you're also not walking on the path. Right, but if, if you go off the path and you find a shortcut just out of coincidence, that doesn't mean you strategize finding the shortcut. That means you got like kind of lucky. But if you didn't go off the path, you wouldn't have found the shortcut. So, but you might have found like a uh, a uh, chasm that you fall into and never get back on the path. Like that's a possibility too. Okay. I'm not saying that. What was he doing saying that he was his Philip? That was crazy. Right. <laughs> but also, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I love a Philip Shepherd. So like I I I I would have been honored. <laughs> it, well, I just yeah. it's I just have that picture of <laughs> Philip Shepherd in his underwear. <laughs> like I just feather? with the feather uh but shout out to q though right like i feel like q sees an opportunity we know q is not here for kenzie or he feels like she's going to turn against him and so like i like the fact that q is like listen we don't know what path we on but we walking we're gonna find a path we're gonna walk you're gonna put your left foot in front of your right foot and we're gonna walk yeah, for as weird as q's motivation was it did seem to get 
get Banu motivated. And I like that Q didn't really throw him strategy, but he was like, let's keep pushing. Let's win. Like, we could do this. But he wasn't going to, like, throw out a name, which I it's, think was smart. So my last take to that, right, the difference between a Q and a Kenzie, right, where I feel like Kenzie was like, come on. What, what do you want? I mean, like, you know, she's that mermaid. Like, what's up? What do you need? And very clearly, he's like, I want to work with you. And she's like, well, who you got? However, with Q, I feel like Q recognizes Banu and it's like, that's not the strategy I'm going to take with you. I Like, follow my lead. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like, I really can see the coach in Q just in those very specific little moments where it's like, I feel like he knew not to be like, well, what are you thinking? Who you got? What you want? It's more like, come with me, do these push-ups, you know, stretch your leg and go for this walk. Yes. <laughs> That is why it's tough in the new era with these six, like, consistent tribes of six where if you get down to, like, four and the other people are just tight, you, there's not really much wiggle room, you know? Like, whereas a tribe of ten, there could be a dominant alliance. You could be in a minority, but you might be in a minority of three, and you have a couple allies that are also on the bottom with you. But now it's like you could be on the bottom by yourself, and there's not a lot so of options to, to even when it's six on that tribe, it's, it's a hard little wiggle exactly. room sometimes, too. Exactly, exactly. I, and this, I've seen people discussing this. I love a, a three-tribe season, but in the new era, it's just been very repetitive yeah. and, like, I, it, it gets stale. I just – it's three tribes would be, like, fun. It just – like, especially after you saw, like, such a good loser story with, like – Tika almost like when you or like actually last season like watching Emily and Caleb dwindle like the losers to like integrating like storyline is just happening every season mm -hmm. and so it's like now every time I'm comparing they're like I literally was sitting there comparing this whole exact episode to the exact same episode we saw with like Jam, Josh and yeah and so like it just like the it, it was purple tribe like it just looked so similar that it was a little like okay like we're getting a little repetitive yeah and it's like at least four or five of the new era seasons have had a tribe that just kind of gets decimated and yeah it's just kind of even the fact that like they use the same tribe colors every season i'm like just mix that up so i can be like oh bryce was on the the pink tribe like i can remember that that he was on that tribe with the other the other pink people but now it's like okay red blue yellow purple green orange and then like it just all kind of blends together, but I agree. Um, Can we talk about the Orange Tribe? Yeah, let's let's bounce over to the Orange Tribe. We got a uh, oh, mm. oh boy, Bryce. Um, because I we, um, what do I you just, want to talk about on the Orange Tribe? Well, right? I just feel like I just need to make some proclamations. And <laughs> one, uh, I don't tell Austin. Uh, and Mama, Mama. Mama Eva, fast forward this because I feel like I was pretty strong on, you know. You see your hoodie. I, I got Q, but you know, I'm still team Q, but I mean, baby, this week I feel like I became a rabbit <laughs> and I am in the field and I am looking <laughs> to be hunted. Okay, <laughs> I've got my white tail up and I want to be found because I don't, Claire, speak to me here. Where have I been these last two episodes? Because I'm, one, I mean, one, Claire, I've never seen somebody out there on that island build such nice yeah. furniture. I'm okay. like, I, I was like, wow, I've just never seen a woodworker uh, work so well with wood. And I just was, wow. you know, I just wanted to be a, a puzzle piece in Hunter's Closet or something like that. On February 27th, I became a oh, I mean, <laughs> ooh, Hunter, I mean, okay. I'm a dove, okay? Shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> Who shoots doves? Oh, I mean, uh, what type of birds do they hunt? That's it? A, quail? a pheasant. Yeah, I'm a pheasant. <laughs> <laughs> no but again i just i don't know what happened and uh don't tell q either but i mean listen uh, we still we still team austin here but i mean you can read the shirt i became team hunter this episode like i mm. now is this strategy he is downplaying his love of survivor and he just wants to stick 
strictly be out there just being a, a man's man and building stuff. I mean, because I, I, I need a new mattress. I need a new bed. <laughs> I could use a chair. Do you think there's room for two on that portable bed, Bryce? I, I mean, it depends on how you arrange them. <laughs> and I'm just saying, uh, you know, I believe I said on my season, us country folk got to stake together. And, you know, he's from Mississippi and I'm from Pennsylvania. And I just <laughs> feel like, you know, what is going on? <laughs> but uh, I don't know. But my eyes just were open to Hunter. And I was just like. Yeah, he had, he had a great episode um, <laughs> for, for many reasons. Uh, we see Venus then goes and kind of clocks Hunter as a threat. Uh, and she tries to kind of dispel this information to Randon. But Randon is like, you're talking about Hunter on our tribe? <laughs> and. <laughs> In his defense, she, you know, Hunter clearly is in a good spot, but to her detriment, I think when Randon said that, she was like something along the lines of, like, he was like, you need to explain. He's like, I'm open to hearing you, but you need to explain your perspective. And she's like, my perspective is, if you don't see that, you're blind. Like, basically, it was like that. It's like, well, you gotta. <laughs> but one thing I'll say is, I think at this point, the two of them can talk like that to each other. Right. I think I think she could be very frank with him because that I think they do have this bond at this point. Oh yeah, I, I didn't mean to say that she, that was gonna like bother Randon, but in terms of convincing him to see where you're coming from, you have to kind of like say, yeah. "Hey, Hunter's got a good social game. He's connected to Soda, to Tevin. Uh, everyone like kind of loves him." But I will say, like, I'm a I'm a Venus fan, but in this situation, when you when you clock someone as being sort of at the center of the tribe. I feel like maybe the move is to go try to get in with them rather than immediately being like, okay, he's got to go. Oh, and by the way, I also don't want to work with Tevin. I don't want to work with Soda. Now, does she have her reasons to not want to work with these people? Sure. But when you were like, okay, half the tribe, maybe Liz too. She, she's like, I don't want to work with them. Well, it's like, well, you need some numbers somehow. It can't just be you and Randon. Yeah, but I one I feel like when he was like, well, "You got to make me see your point." I felt like maybe I'm slow. I felt like she, I, I felt like I saw her point though, right? I thought she I, I thought she explained it. Maybe I don't know. But to your point though, Jack, it's seven days in. Like bonds have been formed. What's the likelihood of her being able to get in with Hunter? Um, it doesn't. I think it's not zero. And so, like, I'm just thinking she doesn't want to work with Tevin. She doesn't want to work with Soda. Is it that really she doesn't want to work with them, or she's tried and they're not meshing? Well, I mean, I think that's that's true, but because it, it hasn't meshed, now they're not really good options for her. And so if you think about you know, you it's a numbers game. you got to get a majority somehow. I feel like on her tribe, besides Randon, maybe Hunter is the best person. So m maybe we didn't see it, but I, I would say before you're like, all right, we got to get him out too. Go and try to just work something. Like, you can't put a target on everybody's back. Do you see any similarities uh, with you and Venus, uh, Claire? Can you see, like, how do you feel seeing her point of view, right? Do you feel, like, what's your thoughts? Okay, I don't know about similar. Either way. Um, no, I, like, totally get her perspective. I think she's right. Like, and, like, I think, yeah, the delivery wasn't great. But, like, yeah, like. She was the point, like, well, as a viewer, made sense. Like, if she's literally being like, he's a huge threat, and he's like, no, he's like, no way he is one, then, like, yeah, that's exactly what she was trying to say. And I agree. I agree with like Jack, though, like, especially like just finding a way to like not be enemy number one with the person who you perceive to have the most power makes sense. And like, yeah, I think that like it's hard for her. She clearly doesn't have like the perfect match and there are people who are starting to group up with like more similarities to each other. And so like, I think finding those similarities, like even I just remember and like totally empathize with Hunter where he was like, when he was like, they love to sing songs. I hate songs. <laughs> and like Venus clearly doesn't seem like she likes to sing songs either. Or like, she's not super loud. She's not super out there. So like, there are like ways that she could probably start to like, even just like socially make be friends with him, especially if you don't think you're losing for a while. Like, it's not like tribal is the thing that's going to bring them together here. They're going to just be hanging out on the beach. And so like, 
I do think that there's like a place for her to do it, but I agree. But I, I also love Venus and like, especially like she, I feel like is somebody who keeps saying, and I believe her when she's like, I'm not going down without a fight. Like I'm going to kick and scream and make a mess. And like, we already see her like calling people out and saying shit. So like, I love, I love yes. but I also no. love Tevin and I love um, Soda. And I actually just like a very likable group of people who, are all just like crazy big personalities um but yeah i really like hunter also like i was like i i watched last week's episode of this and i saw that carla like took notes so i was like oh maybe i should take notes of the episode though as far as i got the only one i got was <laughs> was hunter and tevin because during the immunity challenge hunter's like I'm, you got to help me over after. So he like throws him over mm. the boulder and then grabs his ankles mm. and like goes over with him. And I was like, oh, oh my God, something about that was like. Do we think that that strategy could have been like, everyone could have grabbed Everyone, them? yeah. They just pulled each other. It was kind of like the, he like used the lizard technique from the episode before. Yeah. And like did it to himself. And I was like, I really liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I also think, you know, when Jeff had said they're no longer going to be casting villains, right? Uh, and people had a very wide range of emotions about that. But I also agree with him, right? Because I don't, I wouldn't categorize Venus as a villain, but I like the fact, I like her at it, right? Like, I like the fact that it's like, she ain't playing. She's throwing bows. Throw them bows. 30 inch rims. 30 inch rims. Uh, 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 uh. Throw them bows. Jack. Claire, Claire, you know that song? I don't even think you knew that song, okay. right? <laughs> My quarter wrench rods. Uh, 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 I throw the oh, bows. Jack, who sing that? You just have the lyrics you said were. Uh, 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 uh. But, but Claire, did you? Cadillac grills, Cadillac mills. Grill. Out the oil, my, my Cadillac, Cadillac mills. Matter of fact, candy paint Cadillacs kills. Bills. Jack. So check out the these my, oh. 20 oh, inch wide, 20 inch high. Oh, don't you like my not, 20 inch ride? 20 Jack. inch eyes make 20 inch eyes. Hoping for America. Jack, put your hands up. Eyes. Yeah. Uh, Jack, I mean, let I'm, me see your hand. Yeah. I'm not, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not gonna know. Like, you're not gonna yeah. accuse me of cheating because I, I don't know. Okay, well, just give a guess. Doom, doom, uh, doom. Oh, guess. Oh. The thing is, I guess wrong, and I just look really uncultured. It's no, it's no, no, Jack. Jack, I am Hunter. I am. I, 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 we love the kids. We teaching you. I'm Hunter too. I hate. I hate singing. Soda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Soda. I love. We love the songs. Just take um, a guess, Jack. I'll say NWA. <laughs> See now. I'm Wait, wait, I don't wait. know. I'm just, I know. I know it's an old school. Wait, wait, wait. NWA that sings after police. NWA. Who? Yeah. Okay. They gonna get your ass. <laughs> you guys are gonna set me up. I'm done with this. Dude. All right. Just, no, all right. The only reason I guess that is because I know it was like that's probably an old school, older school song. Oh. Probably like 80s, 90s. Oh. And it's got oh. some some oh. up tempo, and I know that. Yeah. Two thousands. Yeah, I was gonna say early 2000s. 2000s. Early 2000s. Yeah, it's all the same to me. Damn. <laughs> okay. Move. Get, get out the me. way. Get out the way. Get out the way. Move. Jack? Get out the way. Get out the way. I know that song. I don't know who sings it. I wanna lick, 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 lick you from your head to your toes, and I wanna woo for the bed from Hunter's bed down to the floor. Floor. I wanna. You make some good, good. I want to leave. leave. I want to know what was your fantasy. Yeah. Want to get you with a bathroom, windows up. That's the way I got the up. Clogged up, fog alert. Rip the pants and rip the shirt. Oh, maybe not the best. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I don't want to miss the sing along, but I need another Diet Coke. Can you pause? Go get it. Go get your Diet Coke. Jack, Jack, gonna need a minute. What you, what you got, Jack? <laughs> So random tweaks a, a nerve. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one more guess. Wait, one more guess, Jack. Oh, have it. This is what I, I don't like. I, I I know that song too. Like I've heard that song, but okay. Can you will. give me like four options? I will give you three. Hints. I think I'll know it if I have options. We'll give you three hints. I don't need hints. I need like four names. 
Fast and the Furious. You got it. It's not. That was too easy. Very fast and ludicrous. Why are you going to give him the easiest hint ever? Well, he said names. That's terrible. All right. All right. Whoa. Was that Jack or Claire? Coke. Oh. Jeez. Jack, did you hear that opening? Uh, You might need to step the game up. That triggered a Pavlovian response to me. I got to (laughs) go. Jack does it with what? Do you do honey and lemon packets? No, it's lime packets. Okay. Lime. Wait, honey. Mm. You put lime in your Diet Coke? Yeah, yeah, and even crazier, I do two packets of this. I love it really limey. Uh, so I do two packets of this, like, crystallized lime, and then I still put lime juice in it. Oh. Man. It's crazy. I know. I'm oh, Jack. Back. Oh, is that a red? That's a Red yeah. Bull. No, oh, I, I realize I'm, I just had my last Dr. Pepper, but I got me a San Pellegrino. Oh, blood orange. But what were we talking about? What were we doing? Jack was guessing, and then Bryce gave him the easiest hint. Well, ever. he said three guesses. And if what hint did you give him? Fast, fast, fast and Furious. Furious. Oh, yeah. Vin Diesel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now, for a second, I was thinking uh, Nate Dog because I think oh. he had a song that was in Fast and Furious. Nate Dog only has hooks. I know, but we had this one with, uh, like, Eminem, Fast Lane. I think, and so I think that might, might have been in Fast and Furious. Okay. So, uh, there's so, something, something for this. Something, you know. <laughs> some, some, some culture. So, Randon wakes up. Uh, Maybe I'll go get a um, drink, too. Okay, sure. Wait. You know, <laughs> we're not podcasting or anything. <laughs> oh, I love it here. So, Jack, what about Randon? Randon wakes up and he tells oh. Tevin he's not feeling very good. He like pinched his nerve. He like can't feel his hand, and he like feels like he pinched something. Um, That's a good picture. Yeah, it's like what, the crazy thing about it is, is like, have you ever woke up like sleeping crazy and like? I, so, sometimes I'd be on a team call like, "Good morning," uh, and so. That was just kind of crazy to me when the doctor came out and they were like touching his hand and he was saying like I can't feel it like that was like oh I don't know at that moment that I thought that it would be that that serious because like yeah they didn't pull him then but like that was just kind of wild Ooh. to see uh and just any type of medical thing where they have to bring in the doctor is just always crazy but just just you could even see how like his hand was slaying. Yeah. Have you ever done those things? I'm sure they have them in like LA or San Fran, like the I fly where it's like skydiving indoors where you like wear the, the suits and you I haven't done it, but I know what you're talking about. So I did one four years ago, like right after Christmas, me, my sister and my best friend. And while we're doing it, my arm, I dislocate my arm in the, in the machine. So That's like we're flying, my arm comes out and my, first of all, I pay for two rounds to go in. And so I come out, and I'm like scared to tell them, right? So I'm like just sitting there and they're like, your turn is up again. I'm like, no, you can have it. And so then I go up to somebody there and I'm like, so my arm came out of the socket. I was like, can you guys like pop it back in? They're like, no, but we can call 911. And so I was like, uh, no. So yeah, then like, they were like, well, you can go into this room to get changed. And so I was in the room, I was trying to like push it back in, but it was literally like just, so I had to drive myself to the hospital and then they like put my shoulder back in the socket. So see a random like that, like with his arm kind of limp gave me flashbacks. And I can only imagine just that pain of like not having your arm or feeling it. So how yeah. did it happen? Did he just wake up like that or what? I think he just slept on it really weird and it like tweaked the nerve somewhere that disconnected the feeling. But then we Slide over to Sega, um, <laughs> briefly. Weirdly, they they say it said in the caption it was four days ago, which sometimes I know they edit things out of order, and usually they'll just act like it was that day. Which I feel like for this scene they totally could have, um, with this idol hunt, and it, nothing too significant. But Jem is able to find the beware advantage, 
she returns at night to dig up the box and sees like the other ones that um, she has to come back if they lose a challenge. And um, she, the, I think the most significant, I think she leaves the box like in a bush instead of back in the ground. And from the snippet from next episode, it seems like maybe they yeah. find it just sitting there, um, which should be interesting. But yeah, nothing too significant going on on uh, Sega, but Jam now has this beware advantage. I've said it once before and I say it again. Jim is going to be a problem and I can't wait until like she's out there playing and I love it. Right. And I feel like I love her energy. I feel like since we first met her, she was like, ha, 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 let's get all of this out because I'm going to cut somebody. Now, my only critique of Jim, because we've been out there at night, it's dark. There is no way on God's green earth am I walking down any path at night now mind you i told y'all this story before i'm gonna tell y'all again right it was so dark at night <sighs> don't judge me i used to pee behind the med box because <laughs> i didn't like y'all know what those woods look like at dark now mind you since i am a rabbit i would maybe you know to get hunted but uh i i could never imagine doing that right just one is just pitch black and for that fear alone of like where are you going to hide it now in the dark? And you not you don't have a good parameter to know if it's hidden well. So that's my only thing I'm worried for her about. Yeah. Do now I, I'm genuinely genuinely curious. Do we think that because she was going to get the idol, and obviously cameras were following her, that there might have been some light from like the cameras or like the, the crew, or do we think it still would have been really dark? They do like the little black light, so it's still kind of dark. The black light. Um, they don't have a light on their camera. It's not lit up, Jack. You see, like, a red dot, basically. Like an infrared. And then, like, also, but, like, she didn't know that there was going to be a huge box that she was going to have well, to, like, true. that's the one thing is, like, how is she going to know that they, but, yeah, I agreed. Like, when she left it and then I saw the pre preview, I was like, oh, my God. But I thought it was cool. Like, she's so sneaky. I really like yeah, her. Yeah, no, I love it. Okay. And, like, also the fact that, like, you know, I love when they get the camera shots, too, of, like, pure, like, Charlie was so close to her when she found it. Like, and you can't, like, it wasn't like a trick of the eye. It was like, he was like three feet away just with her back to him. And she did it and like got she away so with smooth. it. She was so smooth. Like, and in those moments, people, no matter who you're with, sometimes like you jump and you like, you want to share it. She was just so smooth with it. That's uh, that's scary. I like her. She's so, she's scary in like the, like. Right. The, the best movie. way. Cause you're like. I she I think she's so cute. I think she's so like I would want to be her friend. I would want her to like me. I wouldn't be, you know, and then she's just like cooking. And I'm like also because like especially on tribes like that, when you get the like super kumbaya thing and like people do get a little like it becomes a thing to not be playing, you know? Like I feel like I see her like already getting like eager to do shit and like, but she's doing it in a way that's not like disrupting the piece. And like she's like got her girls and Charlie and now she's like getting racking up the things she needs. Mm. I could see a, a good gem Venus link up. Mm. Oh, oh, Dream. oh. Bro, uh, what, what's the song title? Roman's revenge. Like I like, huh, huh, like a dungeon to drag it. Huh, huh, like, a, like, I don't know. Like that's, that's a, I would love that. I even love the fact when Jim crawled back into the shelter, I feel like she even like, did the little flip over to pretend to be sleep. Like, I feel like she committed to the, the bit, but yeah, I I'm hoping the seed she plants prospers. Cause I definitely want to see her a lot more. Yeah. And then we get to the immunity challenge mm. and you know, to navigate through some water obstacles. Mm. We already talked a little bit about that barrel. They had to roll over. Now uh, I did say my eyes were open this episode to Hunter. <laughs> now, although I am uh what you uh a, a, a what is a pheasant? Sure. You're a pheasant? What's what's the bird? What do we say? A pheasant. A or pheasant, pheasant. yeah. So you know, whoo, I am a pheasant. I also am the letters L M N O P. Because yeah. I'm still a cute fan. Okay, because oh. listen. Cutest episode. <laughs> was it a good episode for him, Bryce? Was it, well, was I it mean, a good episode for you. I mean, 
was it? It was a good episode for us, okay? Uh, because you know, <laughs> put me in coach, okay? <laughs> and little, my name is Bobby Boucher, and I like to be your water boy. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Because Q was Q. I mean, look at the back. Oh, Q's back. How many? Wendell, your back don't look like that. Like, I mean, it's like the muscles on the muscles. I feel like, look at, at Q's back. One of them little tenderloin things. He could maybe give it to a homeboy. A tenderloin thing? What's, the, what's that back muscle? A tenderloin. <laughs> I just feel like, uh, what's his name? Ray? Is it Raymond? Brandon? Brandon. Brandon. Brandon need a his tenderloin not working. Q, Q got an extra one for him. You're an idiot. Okay. His tenderloin. <laughs> I mean, Q was Q in this episode. I uh oh. I just have to say, but yeah, we got they get through the water obstacles. Nami, despite Hunter's efforts, falls behind. Uh, and then they have to dig up these sandbags, and Siga and Yanu get to the, with the you know the the tower where they have to land the sandbags. But they're struggling. Uh, Nani comes in, Hunter, ba ba ba, lands like four straight, and then lands the fifth one before any of the tribes have a second one. Now, is it foreshadowing that earlier in the episode they show those sandbags yeah. in Hunter's basement? <laughs> Damn. Hunter said, I know what to do here. Uh, now, I, I hate to jump around a little bit, but shout out to Charlie because uh, he did his thing. But Q, we do love Q, but here doing my journalistic due diligence. I do have to ask the question, and I feel like this is a new segment we are going to create on Survivor News. With Q struggling a little bit with the sandbags, how do we think Jelinski would have done here? Jelinski is six seven. He just plays some. Five, one, one two, five, five. three. And he says he's a hooper. <laughs> Jack, do you think Jelinski could have? Yeah, I mean, I think he lands five in a row, and then I think he goes and guards up on the other tribe. <laughs> 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 he, he, he gets like seven blocks. He's he's putting up a quadruple double out there. Okay, because uh, I I think uh I was just thinking, and again I love Q, but again my journalistic due diligence is like, this is why it always frustrates me when people say we gotta keep the the tribe strong. Do we or like because I, I you never know whose strength or what are going to be what who is perceived to be weak could be strong and something like this. That's why that saying of we got to keep the, tri the tribe strong, like just stop saying it. Just say you want to target the person that you want to target and it's easier because they're not looking great. So I'm going to just say keep the tribe strong because no, no, I, 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 I'm just saying. I gotta and again, I love you, it. but if this is the, the strong tribe, what well, there's certain things that like sometimes just nobody's gonna be good at, and but that's survivor. That's why you can't say keep the tribe yeah, strong. You can say overall this person's gonna be a more competitive in the challenges than this person. It's not just random who's gonna be good and who's not. That's how it feels sometimes when they say keep the tribe strong. Okay, but with Jelinski, it is one of those things. Like, what if he missed two? He'd probably maybe be like, "Oh, I can't hit it," <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> and like, so I like, what? I'm like. But I'm like I just think honestly, Tiffany probably should have done it. I feel like uh, Tiffany, yeah, well, she, she's like so good at those. Like you could see, she had the finesse to do it. Like I think it just like was in her head, and it was like she was like once he hit like Hunter hit a bunch, like she tapped out. But like you know, she got that one, and she probably could have like with some practice and like reps got in it. So I mean, I just think Tiff probably could have kept going. I agree. I also do feel like it's mind over matter. Like, I, there's no doubt in my mind, Q with them tenderloins, that he can't. I just think that it's once you you get in your head a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, no, no, I no. love Tiffany. She's cool. Yeah, the sandbags are tough. They definitely take like a certain finesse that even if you're sporty, like it doesn't naturally 
line up. Um, but Nami gets first, Sega gets second, and not only do they win like a you know a tarp and some tools, they also Nami gets to choose who goes on a journey, and so they pick Liz from their own crew, they pick Ben from Sega, and they pick Banu from Yanu. And dare I say that this might have been the, been the most, the messiest person from each tribe. Um, not in a bad way necessarily, just like the biggest characters from each tribe all coming together on this journey where immediately Banu spills just all this information and also just goes into this like monologue, like Shakespearean emotional, like for expression that was honestly very compelling to watch uh and it was i mean it was wild and then but there was a few quotes that stuck up to me i mean the winning a million hearts was mm. a lot and then i just love when i think bonnie was talking about like they say i'm too emotional and not strategic and ben was like that does not rock <laughs> yeah, was like, yeah. yeah true that oh, <laughs> like, we love ben <laughs> Before we even get into the challenge here, what what this this meeting of the minds, what stuck out to you guys? I'm still on the fact that I don't care what y'all say, and I don't care even if Banu doesn't know it, he him spilling the beans, right? That's strategic because what does that do to the other people, right? It makes them be like, oh. We love you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like it, it, if there were a world, if he gets to the merge, they're going to rock with him. And I don't care what nobody says. Like, when you're having a pity party and you share your pity party, a part of you knows that, like, people are going to hear you and listen to you. So I still feel like strategy. I mean, I, yeah, I, don't, I think spilling all this information was semi strategic. Like, but when your back's against the wall, I think that's, yeah. That's a, so, uh, quick question. I, Sorry, go ahead, Wendell, because I, well, actually, no, Jack, right to you. <laughs> so, what did you, what did you think of Banu spilling all of that? That was okay? Me? Who no, did? Jack. Well, I think, <laughs> well, if you think you're really going to go home tonight, I think you put all your cards on that table, and it's like, maybe this journey game is something where the other tribe, other people there can be like oh if he's on the bottom like it really seems like he is maybe we can hook it up with like an advantage to help him turn the tables and that's going to benefit our game um i also think like you said it ingratiates him where if they swap or they merge he might get brought in the one downside is like it seems like he does like q or whatever and so to kind of throw q in this with as like his bond with tiffany well now if you go forward with q you might and you want to work with him now you might not be able to. Uh, and so okay. it definitely puts you in a really weak position, but a position where people might want to be bringing you in, which is better than nothing at all. So so could I ask maybe on season 45, when I feel like Couture was doing similar things with giving the information to other people to so bond to get them. So different. So different. Okay. That's like people coming to you with private game information and you but, can do something to, to leverage it and you decide to give it away to the, what could, I mean, not the opposition, well, but probably, I mean, her back was against the wall. Bella it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't really though, but I don't want to keep harping on it. <laughs> he's, he's still in the tribe phase. Uh, and so he really can't do anything else within his own tribe. So now you have to go to the other tribe, but, if if they were at a merge and and his tribe was giving him intel and then he was just going and spilling it, then that would be bad. That would be a bad move. Okay, I just wanted to know your thoughts. Of course, my thought is that since you wanted to know mine as well, um, I feel like Liz looked at him. Sometimes, first of all, I acknowledge that sometimes if you see something in someone's face, it's good to say, "Hey, how are you doing?" I think that is a great thing to do for people. Like check on people right in this case i think liz saw something on his face and essentially she was like hey are you all right and then that's when he decided to become like a water main leak and just spill <laughs> everything the, the different positions there was a point i think he was like <laughs> <laughs> ben was ben was uh, caressing his back 
<laughs> but that's why I love Banu. Like, that's how you know. <laughs> Her boy was like, come <laughs> on, brother. So, like, I don't know, man. All, all you got to do is be like, hey, you all right? And he just, he just sold y'all the whole world. I don't know. I don't know. For not to jump ahead a little bit, but for me, I think the, the best part of it was back at camp, Tiffany and them was like, oh, we know he dropping the dime. We know it. Then him getting back <laughs> is when he got back. And they were like, how was it? Oh, it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all I the <laughs> But I... Uh... <laughs> I also love that when he was like, yeah, like it didn't work out. They're like classic bond. Like, nothing good ever happens. Nothing good ever <laughs> happens. Like nothing good. But I just, it was his like, that's it. <laughs> like Banu. Now you know we've been with you for seven days at this point. And the fact that you just go like, hmm, that's it. <laughs> and then now you don't cut to him. him. And then it cuts immediately to Q asking him, and he's like, "Well, what do you think happened?" And Q's like, and he's like, "I lost my phone. I can't lie to you, Q." Like, um, no, Q told him that. Q was oh, like, "Now, nah, because Bonnie was like, what do you think happened?" And Q was like, "You lost your vote." And he was yeah. like, "Yeah, yeah." No, but hey, you know what that reminds me of? The, hold on, wait, hold on, hold on. Oh shh. That reminds me of like a little, like a little kid sometimes, where you're like. Did somebody eat my Doritos? And you're like, no. I felt like it was more like in that situation. It was like, now I know I had some powdered donuts oh, around yes. here. Okay. <laughs> I know I had some powdered donuts in this house. <laughs> <laughs> Bryce, did you have them powdered donuts? No. <laughs> Bryce, was it you? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're an idiot. Oh, my God. Uh, Bryce, what is is that baby powder? <laughs> you got to keep that on the rest of the pod now. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> but before we even get... No, I love it. Before we even get back to camp, we, we did have, they had the challenge at the journey. And um, it was interesting to me that Bonnie didn't even want to play. Because he's like, well, I want to keep my shot in the dark, but... It's like, dude, I mean, whatever advantage you can get is probably going to give you better than a one in six chance at being safe. So you you have to want to play, uh, I think, uh because your vote doesn't really matter when you're backs against the wall like this. But they play he and Ben draw the blue rock and play this challenge, which is like you have to make this three dimensional cube with I think it was nine different puzzle pieces. Looked pretty difficult. Um, I don't know exactly how much time they had it probably about several minutes, but. Uh, and they, uh, sorry, <laughs> several minutes, several, several, so they're anywhere from three to 20, uh, but they both fail it. But yeah, like, like we said, Bonnie gets back to camp, spills this. I also thought it was very interesting that I think Ben had a really great lie where he tells them it's a different challenge, sort of like a savvy challenge where he has to guess a number, but he won't know until he goes to vote at tribal council because obviously he's not going to have his vote. But I want I like that he gives this option of, well, I might and I might have something else. So you still have to cue me into strategy. You can't just leave me out. I'm not useless. In that moment, do you know who clocked him, though? Or like not clocked him, but asked the right question? Dr. Maria. She said, well, what do you I don't know. If she said, what do you lose or or what do you gain? Mm, yeah. In that moment, Dr. Maria, Dr. Maria. I love her. She well, in it. I'm just I'm just. Dr. Maria, did you eat the powdered donuts? I don't know. But Dr. Maria, she like, even though that's not much, I just love the fact that she, she was, was she it. was listening intently. But I think it's fair that he could be like, well, then that is easy response. Like, well, I could either lose my vote or I can get an extra vote. And he's gonna lose his vote, obviously, but then you know, it's not. I, I think it's I think it was a good move by him. The only question into my mind is like. Once they swap or they merge and they compare notes, is this something that's going to make people suspect of that? Um, which is a concern, but I do think an easy response to that would be like, well, guys, I just didn't want to be left out of the vote conversation because I knew I wasn't going to have a vote. So I, I didn't want to be like, you know, excluded. So it seems like kind of an innocent lie. 
um, that can be explained. But I thought that was a, a good move by Ben. And he showed some some game chops that we haven't really seen so far uh, from him. But um, – Bryce, wipe your face, man. I can't take you seriously. I am literally can't stop staring. I've been staring at him for the past five minutes. Yeah. Do something. <laughs> <gasps> oh, wow. That worked. And But then back on um, Yanu, we also see Q is being super hard on himself about this challenge. He even says, like, I think I should go over. Oh. Which I was like, I respect that he wanted to join Bryce in the third boot club out of his love and admiration for Bryce. But – just because you mess up a challenge, you, you, it's Survivor. Like you can't. It's it's. There's no honor in quitting because you messed up a challenge. So I agree. I I agree. I have so many hot takes. First of all, I feel like my hot takes on Q is like you would not think that I love Q, but I do love Q, right? But I thought hearing him talk, right? One, it made me think like, hmm. Does it validate Jelinski's story that Q wanted to quit first? Like at the sweat savvy? That's what I thought about it first. Um, but also I'm like, Q, what is you doing? Like, what are you doing? Like, I but first of all, I, I mean, I also loved it though, right? Like, I loved him sitting there being like, get it together. You could do it. I I know. All right, no, I fumbled the ball. I fumbled the ball. No, you fumbled the ball. We fumbled, like, I love that, like, whole monologue because I be having to whip myself all the time. So I appreciated that. But also, it's just like, Q, stop playing with me. And I've said it before, I really do feel like he is going to be his, his worst enemy, right? Like, I feel like this competitive spirit, like, I feel like he's going to get in his way because he knows the greatness that he holds himself to and I feel like just something's going to happen where it's like it's just out of your control and that's just the way life goes and I think it's going to get in his head and it might become a liability down the the road where we might make the merge and you might be like oh I should have won that immunity like send me home and like huh, okay like so I just feel like I love it because again we love to see a strong built articulate southern chocolate D1 athlete i mean we love to see it on our screen okay we love to see a, a good coach a good referee a good flag on the play a good foul a, a, a good rebound a good interception a good dunk a good three-pointer a good flag trick Patrick, you had, yeah, you had you were, you had it for uh, you were going. <laughs> I, I, I believe that you could name sports terms all day, Bryce. I, I maybe more than more, maybe more sports terms than uh, Taylor Swift songs. Oh, and Charlotte, a good hole in one, <laughs> <laughs> a good touchdown. <laughs> wow, you're doing some good ones. I mean, I, 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 you know, that wide receiver position looks mighty. <laughs> <laughs> Bryce, you're going to freak when you hear about tight ends. <laughs> Put me in, coach. Flag on the play. Up in the passer. <laughs> oh, um, that's a, frag a flagrant foul. A flagrant. Uh, no, I do like that Tiff shut this down immediately. Right, was, right. And I also it, I thought I noticed it was funny, like, you know, Q has some coach. Like, he refers to – people are calling him coach. When we think about the some of the the greatest coach, Benjamin Wade, and who has a lot of these like the, the, like philo, philosophizations, and I thought it was Q funny when Q after this segment sat there, he's like, "Why does God always give me his toughest battles?" Like <laughs> it, it, felt, it felt very Benjamin Wade coach esque. So I don't know. I guess anyone who refers to himself as coach on Survivor is just a little bit. Uh, a little bit out there. Sometimes. I liked when they. I liked when he was like down on himself when they started playing the like football noises in the background. Yeah. <laughs> like they clearly like looked up like football sounds. Yeah. Whistle. And it was like a whistle. Oh. It also, I have a question. Oh. I was gonna say f that reporter that <laughs> that put that headline. Like damn. Yeah. Uh, like geez. But uh, my last thing is. Say we were on a larger tribe, right? 
that's all someone needs. It like say somebody we're on a larger tribe and somebody didn't like him, and he's like, "Take me out. I deserve." Like that's all somebody need to hear. So it's like you toughen up, not toughen up, but like you lock it up, lock it up. Yeah, ain't that they that with like Coach Bryce? Yeah, right. <laughs> Hustle. Hustle. Oh my god. Defense. What what was your question? I think it was it was more about like people's thoughts to quit in these last couple seasons and me thinking like is this a product of like I I don't think that the I don't I question whether the the long-term fans are the fans that are quicker to say maybe I want out of this. So, I could be wrong, but like, I, I just he's a long term fan. You don't know, right? And I, I'd assume that he I might be. He is, is he? The references that he used aren't like short term. Oh, I guess you can talk about like Philip Shepard and right. Stuff. Yeah. True, 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 true. I'm just thinking like the post COVID fans. Like, I, I feel like people that have watched Survivor for a very long time have kind of like seen how the process is not friendly to these people that have quit historically mm. jeff was a little um nicer last season and he's he's been hard on himself about even being nice last season so i just um i don't know i was just wondering like if it's i think my observation is like that that they might be newer or like covid fans or fans that have binged or something that are like all right it's okay if i get out there and and quit and okay it is your prerogative you know do what you do but I don't know. I, don't yeah, know. I, I, can't, I can't put myself in that like mindset. Like I know people like get mad at me for like not playing or whatever. Cause I sat out of challenges, but like never would I have like ever openly been like, you should vote for me or would I have ever wanted to leave? Like there is no part of me that like, you know, like you could have put me through so much shit and I would have taken all of it because like, so it's hard for me to think about it. I do think that like, once you see somebody quit, it becomes easier oh, is my only awesome. thing. Like once you see somebody, like, I feel like you see it on, there's a couple seasons where people, two people quit. And it's like, once somebody says like, oh, you can vote for me and you see it happening. Like, I feel like people start to mirror that more, so I, but I don't, yeah. Like I just like, I mean, I don't think anyone on my season did, but like, it was just like, there was no part that like people were like, yeah. Let me like take me out. And it's interesting that Q comes at it from like more of a point of like honor. Right. Yeah. That, yeah that's, is that but that's obviously right. it's still not good in the game of Survivor, but it's not like he's struggling. He's like, I messed, I'm, I failed the team. Like, you got to cut me or whatever, which sounds, like, also, sounds like a do with a lot of integrity, but you don't, you don't need integrity in Survivor. You know? And also, it's like, doesn't it show more if you get, beat and beat and beat and you're like you know what nah i'm gonna wake up tomorrow and i'm gonna find i'm gonna figure this thing out agree i, mean, I guess well, that, that's my approach to things it depends on who's doing the beat also it's not like anyone else was saying like q step down step down let us right try, let us try. like exactly. it wasn't like like i think it's one of those things where like an appropriate level of it like fine go beat yourself up at your confessional or like you know like go to the bathroom and cry and then come back but like to some extent it's like hey guys sorry about that and then if no one says like, "Hey, you fucked up," like say, "Okay, continuing," like exactly, like we're gonna get them next time. Sorry about that. Right. You can feel um, really bad for letting your team down, but no, in no world would I, especially if you're the person that's picked to step up, right? Like it's not like like you said, Claire. No one else is saying, well, "Let me do this instead of you." Q. I mean, we we said Tiff was doing all right, but Q might have been their best option. And just because you're the best option and it wasn't enough, doesn't mean that now you should go home when the other people might not have been able to do it at all. Another thing that I noticed, right, uh, and maybe this validates Q's point, right, in when he was doing this, Kenzie was support, like, you know, Kenzie was, you know, like, come on, like, no, no. But Tiff was like, boy, shut up, we going, I'm right? Like, but in my mind, Kenzie was like, I mean, <laughs> uh, if you, <laughs> like, you see the differences, right? And so it kind of like aligns with what Q was saying. Like, Kenzie don't mess with me. Or like, I could see where Kenzie's at. And just when you look back at them kips, Kenzie's like, oh, it's come I mean, you know, but I mean, she also is saying, she ain't saying like, stop it. Like, so I just am like, 
even in those moments, Kenzie is still eating. That I love mama. Tiff's. I also love Tiff's little like like when she said, "Don't make the block hot." The right. other week, and like when she just like she is swift and she like knows like like cut it and like she's pretty good at like getting people to like stop when they're yeah. being crazy. And I feel like that's really good for like managing, especially she's like managing a couple pretty crazy people. Being able to be like without them being like, "Whoa, that was so rude of her." She's like, "Cut it," and they're like, "Okay." And what we said about her last week was that she's in the best position on the tribe being like the swing between Q. She's like the Q whisperer. Like, yeah, and they're like fighting over her. Yeah. And then Kenzie, like, yeah, she's she's uh she's playing. And yeah. now with Banu going and saying like Kenzie's the biggest threat, like we saw them both go back to their tribes and be like, Yeah, he said Kenzie's the mastermind. Like, so now mm -hmm. everyone's gonna be like, Okay, Kenzie, and now like Tiff is totally at least covered by one person at least. Yeah, it just I love Tiff. That's my queen. I want her to win. I just get so nervous after last season seeing a player like Kelly, right? Where it's like, yeah, you're in that great swing position, but there's a time where it might come a liability if you don't pick a side. And I don't know if Kenzie is pressuring her as much, but Q is definitely be like, is we best friends or no? Like, he's giving I her that pressure. I, I I I see Kenzie as the Kelly. I do too. And I've I've said that a, a, for a couple of weeks, but also I find it when you have someone like Banu who can go to these two people from this other tribe and give give all of this stuff for them to go back to their tribes and now say that like Kenzie is that person <clears throat> post merge or whatever like. It's 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 gonna be all eyes on her, you know. She might be the merge boot that like they are not gonna let this woman get so, top seven. So let me give you a little pushback, right? I agree to that statement. However, when we have players like a Dr. Maria, when we have players like a Venus, right? When we have these like kind of like what do you call them? Uh dark horses, like when we have these outlining players. What we would assume people think is like, oh, we got to get her out. But I could see a world where somebody like a Dr. Maria is like, if I could work with her, I could see a gym being like, let me tag in with a sis. So, okay. I mean, that's a fact. Like, I would love something like that to happen. And so it just makes me wonder how a Dr. Maria processed that, how uh, a Venus processed it, how a gym processed it. Because I feel like that might be music to somebody's ears. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I guess we see Q tell Bonnie that he would like to try to get Kenzie out. And Q goes to Tiffany with this. Uh, you know, we inevitably see Randon get removed from the game. But just to just to theorize, do we think Bonnie was going home or do we think there was a chance that Kenzie would leave? I think, like, it, the, there was a bigger chance last week that Kenzie was going home, but, like, with Banu losing his vote, like, I think the best move for Q to do that would have just been to use his double, like, use his two votes and use one vote from Banu and take her out. I know he's afraid to go against Tiff, but, like, once Banu lost his vote, I don't think he was going to do that. I mean, I forgot that he does have that vote. Like, I mean, if you want her out that bad, that, that's a way to go. Uh, I also loved his. Do you, a, do you have an extra vote? Didn't he? He has the idol. Oh, it's an idol. Or wait, no, I'm lying. That ain't his. Oh, no, he, he... he gave. He gave just a fake one. Sorry, I believed though when he said, "Give it back." Oh, I'm not pretending like he has an extra vote. Who went on the? Oh, Jelinski went. No, I'm totally making it up. I'm making shit up. But no, it was him last episode talking about, well, give it back. That made me think it was actually uh, real. But what I do love is that. I love the fact that him pitching that to Tiff and now we see the inner workings of Tiff's brain being like, well, I know Kenzie is a strong like player, but I think that we're close. But now it just has Tiff second guessing it like it's different from when you're watching it at home and be like, you should do this than when you're actually in the game. So I uh, whether it worked or not, I liked just hearing Tiffany kind of like dissect it with us because I just thought it was like really good points to make you think like where it's like, wow, you do seem comfortable, but what do they say in the game? When you get comfortable, that's when you go home. So it's like, is we playing, playing, or is we on the sideline? Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't think it would have been a good move for Tiff to take out Kenzie, and I think she's smart enough that she would not have done that. Uh, I think they're just trying to make it interesting. But maybe we'll have a chance. Like, if they don't swap, maybe we'll see this happen again. So maybe we'll, we'll get an answer to our question. They fooled me last week. They had they did all of this running around and stuff to make me think. That's what, like, they keep on trying to fool me. I'm like, you know what? This week it would have been Banu. You know what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Y'all not going to fool me this time. So that's what I think. I think it truly would have been Banu. Yeah. And then, unfortunately, Randy gets pulled from the game. Uh, it's a shame, especially because we see after that, it was seemed to be a pretty minor uh, injury. But, of course, you got to be safe. Like, if it was serious, it would have been very serious. Uh, something that was stuck out to me that I want to ask you guys. When Jeff goes and breaks the news at Kanu, they were basically like, our prayers have been answered. Like, Brandon needs an MRI. Yeah, yay. And it was like, I don't I tell you, can't, I don't even know if I can blame him, but it was definitely not the, maybe the most tasteful response. But what did you guys think about this? I thought it was tasteful. I thought, like, just tasteful in the sense of... <laughs> I thought it was tasteful in the sense that it sucks that his game had to end. And like we say in Survivor, it's, of course, a game of strategy. It's a game of luck. And it's a game of just walking, right? Like, in life, anything can happen. Any, like, you know, we get, any like, lightning can strike. So it's like, yes, it sucked that he has it be out of the game. And, and like, I feel for him. However, like Jeff said, the game of Survivor continues. And so us as viewers seeing Banu struggle all this episode, him praying to the gods, him saying, like, you know, please, like, give me, like, I like if that's not like an act of God or that to renew your faith, like I appreciated that. Although Randon's game ended, Banu's game kind of still continued. I, I don't know, I, like poetic justice. I don't know if that's the right thing, but like not poetic justice, but like I, I saw the 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 shiny gold pot at the end of the rainbow. Like, I don't know. I just, you know, keep, I, th- th- it lifted my head up. <laughs> it lifted my head up. It was tasteful. It, it was in the sense that, like, so if you're about to go home and they say Claire tripped on uh, a seashell and cut her toenail open and we got to, Take her to go because we don't want to get infected, and you're about to go. Like, I you're pray like, for this. <laughs> Thank you God. Pray for that. You pray to. Hallelujah. <laughs> no, no, see, I, I'm with you, Bryce, because you know the y'all new people. No, look, I don't think it was tasteful, but I don't know if I blame them. Right? If you're about to go, you've been through their absolute ringer, and this guy who you don't really even know is getting pulled out of the game, and it sounds like he might need a surgery or something, but he's not gonna like have knock on wood not gonna have some serious damage or anything of course if i'm in that moment i would be like oh that's so devastating like (laughs) and then kind of be happy i I don't know if i'd celebrate so actively but i i agree with you in the sense that it's like if say the four of us were together we had to go to another tribal and then they're like oh well joe schmo on the other tribe has to get pulled i'd be like well i'm not thank god i'm not losing one of my people like that sucks for him but I'm glad that our my my crew, all everything I know in the game is still together. Who would have been going home of the four of us? Probably me. So <laughs> my prayers were answered. <laughs> Maybe Wendell. Okay. I think so. Uh, but the reason why I say it's tasteful is if Banu is not anything, he's authentic. He's emotional. He like, would you expect anything less? Yes. No. Well, yeah, like, no, I would not. And that's actually, Banu got a, has been getting a lot of like slack online, I feel like. But I love Banu. He's just, it's just raw emotion. Uh, when he talks, it feels like, like I said earlier, almost like a monologue from a play or something. He's just pouring his heart out and he's playing hard. And like, maybe, maybe sometimes people are saying he's over emotional, but it's like, what? No. It's, it's, it's always authentic, like, entertainment, you know? Over emotional. <laughs> Where? Like, here. <laughs> stop oh, <playing>. no. <laughs> I listen. I I'm here for it. I love it. Now my I love uh Banu. My one 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 critique of him is baby boy. 
Don't be out here talk about you not here for the money. Like you're here for a thousand likes. Like I, but but again, again, strategy, strategy. Because if he's not here for the money, and if <laughs> clearly you're practicing your speech, and that's what you're going to tell Jeff, would you not want to sit next to Banu? Banu and Liz, my ideal yes. final three. Um, no, I, I get what you're saying, like, but the he's thing lowering is, lowering his threat level. Yeah, but once people start to perceive you like that, then it's hard to ever come back from that, you know. But that's when you do come back. We'll see. When you do catch that interception, and you run fifty yards down oh, to the first line to the first, get a first down. Offense in offense foul receiving, yeah. and <laughs> you can punt the ball, mm -hmm. do a special play, and get a field goal and an extra point. Then, what does it yep. matter? Yep, a hundred percent. Um, wait, no, like, like I saw on Twitter it was like I think he got like. 12 plus confessionals and i think it was like three or four people got no confessionals this episode so it was like truly the banu show this episode like yes. people were just like completely wow. gone this episode and he was just carrying the entire thing. and we see in the trailer too i think he tells us he, i think he said guys i said I mean, something bad <laughs> so let's see what happens so jack and claire i have a question for you guys because you guys seem to love the preview for the following episode in a yes or no is that not a spoiler i like spoilers we uh, okay yeah, right. i love no, it's, not a, it's not a spoiler it's in the episode but has the episode aired it's in the preview but has the episode aired no okay. but I'm, not, I'm not saying someone goes home it's just like okay. i mean you I don't mean, know the just, context i, I mean there. i'm just trying to Follow I can, the logic. I can respect though, the people that don't like the previews. I can respect that. I'm just saying, because if I can't tweet something on Friday about somebody going home, well, Friday is different than Wednesday at eight at nine oh one p.m. So I can't do that. But in the episode, they can spoil next week's episode. Yeah, because you, you don't have to watch it. But if I open up Instagram and I see you in, you don't have to open up Instagram. But like, that's, that's his job, it. Bryce. He he needs Instagram. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, I'm gonna start spoiling. I'm just gonna start texting you. Spoiling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, Y'all on the same time zone. Uh, no, they're not. Uh, yeah, they are. No, yeah. They are. Oh yeah, I kept. I was thinking Jackson, Chicago, still. No. Yeah. That was like a year and a half ago. Whatever. Also, another <laughs> another cue moment. That again, I love Q, but I'm gonna call Q out when he was offering himself up as tribute. Like y'all could take me, take me out. I I messed up. I did wrong. I messed up the being back. And Tiffany was like, "Boy, if y'all shut up and stop it, mind you." If you looked at his face in the camera, though, he was like, <laughs> like, I, "Like, like I feel like that's I, I feel like again strategy." Okay, so. Do we think he was saying all of that to disarm Banu from using the shot in the dark? No, but I do think it could be an interesting strategy to do something like that to gauge, like we said, when, when Tiffany's like, No, you're staying here. Yeah. He's like, Okay, that's my ally. And Kenzie was like, Well, I mean, yeah, if you know, I also think like if he's trying to blindside Kenzie, like making it seem like he's given up isn't a bad call, right. Cause then it's like, okay, he's probably either going home or he's just going to like, kind of, he's just going to accept what we tell him. He's not like trying to play and like think of steps ahead. It's true. If he did it, if he did that intentionally, then I can see that being a good strategic move, but you kind of have to tell your allies like, yo, I'm about to make some things up. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that episode three was a, a great episode. I do have to ask Claire, my other th reigning third boot is Raymond. I keep saying his name. Brandon. Brandon. Fourth boot. Yes. Is, is he? Bryce, you were wrong. I'm fourth boot. Uh, well, it, Claire's not. Well, How you so feel? technically whoever on this season gets voted out next would be the same position as Claire. 
Wait, no, wait. Because yeah. there's one medevac and then three vote outs. But so far there's been two vote outs. So they'll vote. actually have the same thing where they'll have been the fourth boot, third vote out. Okay. Yes. But I still claim you, Bryce. Thank you. Yeah. But um, what was the question? If uh, Randon, do we consider him the third boot or the third out? I, okay. Ooh. Uh, to be honest, I think it's position. It's not when you're voted out. Like it's you get 18th, 17th, 16th, I think, whatever. So he is third boot. So we or not he got voted. Welcome Randon into the illustrious third out club. Uh, I hate to see him go that way, but I also hope that he knows he is in very good company. Uh, great things happen. 17th out. Uh, and keep your head up, Brandon. And like, I mean, he definitely was a player. I was definitely looking out to see how he would do. He definitely has some tricks up his sleeve. Uh, but yeah, welcome to the club. Now, I do have a question. Do we feel like with Bruce, and we know Bruce was medevaced and there was a, a response. Do we feel because uh, Brandon has played a couple more games and got to actually feel the game? Do we feel like, should we listen to On Fire this week and see if Jeff has an announcement? I don't know if you'd announce it, but I know what you're getting at of like, would they bring him back? Right. And I would say if he fits, because obviously day seven or eight is a little bit different than day one, like Bruce. Uh, I would say if he fits a, a, new, a new cast as a really – valuable member of a cast independent of his history then give him another shot but i wouldn't say like was randon giving us like grade a tv i don't know so i wouldn't say he needs to be back on but if they're like randon would be a good fit in this cast let's give him another chance like i would not be mad at that i i wouldn't want him on a newbie cast i i think that he has a high likelihood if they do a returning season. I think for oh. sure uh, I could see the support for having him return, being as though like they weren't going to tribal. This is something that happened in the middle of the night that he had no control over. Just my thoughts. Well, that happened with uh, what? Pat Cusack and uh, David Goliath. Didn't he? Also, Matthew made it a little bit further, but also got meta back from the winning tribe. One thing I'll say is if you can get medevaced and brought back as like a precedent, I would have smashed my head on a rock <laughs> before my tribal. That's I'll say it. If I like, if this becomes a precedent, I'll break my arm. I'll come back. I'll get a good do over whatever. So like, I, I do think there is to some extent, like it's, it's horrible. True. I think like if he was, if he's a good character, he should come back. But like, if you get medevaced, like automatic, I I might as well like I literally knew I was going home. I would have just jumped off a rock, seen what happened, whatever. I think like, Bonnie would do that too if he had done that. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I'm just saying, like it is a kind of a slippery slope of like, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a hard it's a hard line to draw. That is, I agree, I agree. Would you not have like harmed yourself? <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I would have harmed myself. <laughs> Uh, it would be crazy if you're not even going home, but you're like paranoid. So you're just <laughs> like, I don't like I don't like this version. Let me do it over. <laughs> uh, you get to come back and then you you see your cast. You you like I'm, you're like I don't like the theme. But you just off the <laughs> I ain't trying to be in this purple. What y'all doing? I want to be an orange. They're gonna have, like start having to put pillows and like padding everywhere to protect us. Everyone in the season just has like those like big poofy gloves. <laughs> so they can't <laughs> no harm. Oh, Wendell uh or winners at war after the merge. <laughs> <laughs> hey Bryce, what's a merge like? What'd you say? What's a what's a merge like? What's day two? What's two days after the merge like? Not so bad. <laughs> Watch them out. There's a couple of us over here that told yeah, me. No, I'm sorry. My bad, my bad, my bad. It's okay. I've I've come to peace with it. I had to, you know, it's what it is. Um well, I mean, this has been a fun episode. Thank you guys so much, Claire. You're amazing. Jack, as always. When Deezy, what's up? Uh <laughs> Uh, we'll be back next week covering episode four. Spoiler alert!
you can see uh, previews from the episode <laughs> after the episode. Uh, thank you guys for listening. We'll be back. Bryce and Wentz for 46. Tickets are available. Click the link in the Bryce and Wentz bio. We out. See y'all. Bye, 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 bye